Good morning. Today is May 2nd, 2024, Friday, in front of Shabbat. We continue with our Tanya lessons using Rabbi Schneer Zalman's uh, Tanya with the Chaim Miller's, Rabbi Chaim Miller's uh, commentary. And today we'll look at the practical application of unusual situations with Tanya. How can the, how can the esoteric matters of the higher world, so to speak, relate to the physicality of our world? Uh, yesterday we talked about, and the Tanya develops the concept of essentially uh, understanding that the connection to God, unity with God, can go through stages. It's like going to the gym, working out, building the muscles, and getting strong. You can't just buy the muscles. You have to kind of work towards this. So Tanya says, first must be hard work. Well, hard work means uh, the person needs to do some go to the synagogue, study Torah, do mitzvot, pray, and through this process um, you will develop the love. It will be a fear of God. The fear, not in an English word fear, but reverence or that type of respect to God. Then the next step will kick in love. So that studying will hey, 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 come, to, come to the synagogue. We have a Torah lessons once a week, once a month. Uh, can you, would like to sit in class for, for an hour, half an hour, 45 minutes? Okay, so the person starts without much uh, pull to that, without much interest, but just starts kind of mechanically initially. And then that develops, eventually develops into love. So love doesn't just kick in automatically. It has to come from first, just making the first step, and then things, good things will follow. And then once that happens, and the next stage kicks in, a higher level that talks about love on a worldly way, and the world of the, on a higher level, love of the higher, the Tanya calls it worldly love and great love. But Tanya says sometimes there is the exception to this rule. Sometimes the person completely non-observant, completely not doing anything religiously, so to speak. Good person, but uh, doesn't know much, didn't grow up as Reverend, didn't grow up in an environment that he knows anything about Torah or God. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, he get, he kicks it in, not even all of a sudden, but he has this connection. Well, I'll give you two anecdotes, two stories, or that exception. Tanya said that happens very rarely, but it could, it, it's possible on an emergency situation, on an unusual situation, bypass the circuit of going through all the worlds. I see uh, Yitzira, Berea, Atzilut, and then to the Ein Sof. And then the revelation hits you after that work. Sometimes you can bypass it. Example, they say the story is like the Jewish gangsters. There was a little gangsters in Chicago in 1930s, I guess. Uh, pretty bad guys, but he was Jewish. And on Saturday, on Shabbat, he would not kill, he would not drop banks. He was a good man. Shabbat, I go to the synagogue. I don't kill, I don't do it. How do you explain that? The guy's a mobster, and yet he had something in him on Shabbat? No, no Shabbat, I can't relate Shabbat. Another story is that somebody was very, very ill, and uh, he went to all the, all the doctors, and doctors basically said, nothing we can do, you don't have much time. He went to the rabbi, he went to Rebbe, it was a, I think it was a Hasidic guy, he went to the Rebbe, and Rebbe says, look at him, talk to him, and says, you would live, here. Take these pills. And it was around Pesach time, actually. The guy took these pills, went home, took pills for, like, for a week. And all of a sudden, all his symptoms just were gone. So he said, what miracle happened? I mean, it was gone. Talking to the Rebbe happens. Well, it turned out the pills, what the Rebbe was doing, what that Rebbe did, if I understand the story correctly, he took a matzah for the pace of matzah, ground it, ground the matzahs, and made them into a little kidurim, little bowls, little little medicines, coated with something, I'm not sure with what. So the guy was eating matzah on Pesach. That's what you're supposed to do. And that cured his disease. Most of you watching this, well, that's a Bible Meister stories. <laughs> How does it happen? And even if it happens, we can always, this is our Western mind will rationalize things. We'll say, 
well, you know, uh, the power of conviction. Yeah, psychologically, yes, it, it, uh, it invokes his enzymes, it invokes his uh, immunity system, and it took care of it, and it grew a disease. Very possible. Very good scientific explanation to that. Or it could be just a fluke. Work for this guy, and another guy, it wouldn't work. Maybe just one of the rare situation happens, and people talk about it, but they don't talk about another hundred cases when something like this didn't work. Also possible. So we always can find rationalization, explanation for things that happens beyond the natural, beyond the, uh, beyond the normal course of events. But those examples, that connection, that person took in medicine believed that that he went to the Rebbe. Rebbe is connected in his mind. Rebbe is connected more closely to God than he is. Uh, many people say, well, how would any uh, Rebbe or not Rebbe, we all humans, we all have connections. Well, Tanya says there's different degrees of connection. Some people greater, some people less. So a person who doesn't have a good connection feels as Zohar and Kabbalah relates to. If you talk to Tzaddik, if you're in the presence of the holy man, that's why Hasidim in Israel go to the graves of the holy man in Safat, and they feel, in, they don't pray to a person, they pray to God. We're not idol worshippers, pray to the person. But they feel in the presence of the, of the um, Kabbalistically, the Nishama of the disease still uh, breaks in, in several layers and some goes up to the heaven, some portion of that, so to speak, still kind of floats around the grave. And then being in the presence of that spiritually uplifts you. Again, psychologists will say, well, that's psychological evaluation. The guy went to the grave at night and prayed the whole night and then came in and all of a sudden, you know, he got a million dollars lottery ticket, won, something like that. It, it's all possible. The power of conviction, power, you can say, you can get it even without any belief in God. Just if you think, if you really concentrate and want to get something happen, it might happen to you. We can all, all put all sorts of theories, perhaps, but the point is, there's something in our bodies, there's something in our psyche, in our physique, that connects us to something beyond the normal five senses, beyond normal physicalities, beyond the normal laws of physics of this world. And that is what Tanya is saying. Whether you believe or don't believe in a higher power, in, a, in God, in universe, in the, uh, the powers above you, or partially believe in it, in any case, you can apply these methods in order to better your life, in order to better the life of people around you, in, in order to connect with the rest of the Jewish nation, the rest of the humanity, by pulling this divine light down. Whichever way you might want to define this divine light, whichever way you wish to define God in his actions, whichever way you understand it, now it knows, of course, for sure, how God exactly functions. Now it has been up there, looked at it, and then came back and explained to us. But we have a face, we have belief, we have rational understanding. We look in the world around us and we put together a theory that makes our life more fulfilling, more meaningful. That is the chapter 43. That's our lesson 71 on May 2nd, 2024. And we're in chapter 43 of the 53 chapters of Tanya's. And then we'll continue tomorrow to sec next section, also next section of um, section chapter 44, more love meditations. It will say there are actually, actually more levels than one. It's not only reverence and love. You begin to do something out of just mechanically, and you develop reverence, fear of God, all of God, and then will kick in love, and then you will grant it after. That, that's hard work. You don't have to do it. And then God will kick it in and gives you the next elevation level, the love of God, which means fully melting yourself in the recognition of the unity of universe and limitness. And essentially, every single zero, everything else is God. So, sky is God. I am God, uh, buildings are God, my work is God, the family are God, so to speak. It's all one, just expressed differently in this world. That's the concept Tanya is trying to bring to us. And it says next, unlocking your soul deep love of God, and then into the different levels of God, meaning everybody, everybody has a different level. So it's not four major levels, like we said, Asiya, Yetzirah, um, Biria, Asilo, but 
infinite number in between. Everybody, according to, a, to his history, to his background, to his ability, to his desire, to his efforts, in a different level. And the higher we get to this level, the more fulfilling the life can be. But even if you're still on a lower level, but on some level, not at zero, it's already good and rewarding and, uh, and beneficial for you, for God, for humanity, for your family, for your friends, for, for the purpose of our mission, for the purpose of our existence. All right, have a great day. Today is Friday. Shabbat Shalom. And we'll talk more on Sunday. Baruch Hashem. Amen.